Have you ever wondered how you can easily put points on a map, like fast food restaurants in a city or cities in a country? Today, I'll show you how. Hi, it's Guillermina here from Data Wrapper, the data viz tool that helps you create better visualizations regardless of your coding or design skills. There are different kinds of maps that you can create in Data Wrapper. Corplet, symbol, spike, arrow, and locator maps. In this tutorial, we're going to focus on the symbol map. This type of map lets you put symbols on a map wherever you want them. And on top of that, you can add extra layers of information through the size and the color of the dots. For this tutorial, we're going to create a symbol map showing the locations of research stations in Antarctica. In the first two columns in our data set, we have the exact location of each research station specified with the latitude and longitude. We also have columns with the name of these locations, the type of location, summer or permanent, country it belongs to, who administers it, the name of the location it's in, the year they were established and its capacity. Let's bring all of this on a map. Once you're logged into your data wrapper dashboard, head over to create new and select map. The first question that data wrapper will ask you is what kind of map do you want to create? Simply choose symbol map. You will then land on the first step, select your map. Here, you'll be able to choose from a collection of over 4,000 base maps with different administrative boundaries. Because we have data for research stations in Antarctica, we'll select the Antarctica map. Click on Proceed and you'll land on the following step, where you can add your data. There are different ways to import your data into Data Wrapper. You can copy and paste your data into this text field, upload a CSV or an Excel file, connect to a Google Sheet, or link to an external data set. For this tutorial, we'll copy the data from Google Sheets and paste it into the text field. Let's click on this arrow to proceed. As you can see, Data Wrapper has correctly matched the latitude and longitude coordinates in the data set with the locations and has already pre-populated a preview of the symbol map. Let's double check that Data Wrapper has selected the correct columns for the latitude and longitude. Great. Now, if instead of latitude and longitude coordinates, you've got addresses, for example, you'll be able to click on Generate Coordinates to ask Data Wrapper to automatically generate the latitude and longitude coordinates for you. Let's go back to our map. Since you're creating a symbol map, you will also be able to select a column for the size and the color of the symbols. You'll select the column's capacity for the size and type for the color. If you click on Proceed, you will get to the Check tab. Everything looks good here, so let's click on Proceed again to go to the Visualize step. In the Visualize step, you will always see a preview of the map on the right side of the screen that will automatically update as you customize it using all the different options on the left side of the screen. You will also see three different tabs, Refine, Annotate, and layout. In the first tab, Refine, you can change the shape and size of your symbols and the appearance of the map. First, you will be able to customize the shape and size of the symbols. Let's go with circles and change their maximum size. Let's set it to 50. Then, let's change the color of the symbols for the permanent and summer categories. If you click on Advanced Options, you'll be able to further customize the symbols. For this map, I like the look of keeping the symbols outlines and use their color as fill. I also like switching on the toggle to multiply the color of overlapping symbols. This makes symbols that are superposed stand out more. 
Feel free to play around with the options yourself until you like the appearance of your symbols. Let's make it easier now for your readers to know what the data is about. To do so, turn on the Show Size Legend. If you prefer a different layout for a size legend, you can also change it here. Or you can also add a title and position it above the visualization. Let's also customize the color legend. Let's also make the map zoomable so that readers can zoom in and out to explore some of the smaller symbols. Let's also increase the additional padding under the appearance section so that the symbols don't get cut off. Let's try 7%. Looks good. And that's all we wanted to change here. If you click on Proceed, you'll move on to the next tab, Annotate. Here, you can add more information to the map to guide your readers through the story that you want to tell. You can add a title, a description, and notes that will be displayed above or below the map. If you switch on the Show Tooltips option, you will be able to give readers even further information whenever they hover over the symbols. Simply add data from all the columns you imported in Step 2 by clicking on any of these tokens. Let's customize the tooltips of this map so that they include more information about the different research stations. You can further edit the tooltips by changing some of the text to bold with a little bit of HTML, for example. Everything that's between B tags will be bold. You can also use BR tags to add line breaks. Feel free to play around with other HTML tags and see what works best for your tooltip. Now, maybe there are certain symbols you want to draw attention to. For that, you can place text annotations. To do so, you can click on Add Text Annotation and place it by clicking on the spot where you want the text to show on the map. If you click on Proceed, you will get to the Layout tab. Here, you can, for example, let readers download your map as a static image or add social media buttons to it. The last step is the Publish and Embed step. Up to this point, the symbol map you created is private. That means that only you, only the person who created it, has access to it. There are two ways you can get the map out of data wrapper and into publication. One way is to click on Publish Now. Right after, data wrapper will share a link to the visualization so that you can share it with others and an interactive embed code so that you can embed the map in a website. You can also download the map as an image for use in social media or presentations, or as part of data wrapper pay plans as a PDF or SVG vector files to use in printed publications. And that's it. Congratulations. You just created, customized, and published your first symbol map in data wrapper. I hope you found this video helpful and that you're excited to keep creating more symbol maps in Data Wrapper. Thanks for watching and happy mapping!